In today's video, we're going to be exploring the diet of a medieval peasant. This video is not sponsored by HelloFresh. Welcome to Medieval Madness. During the Middle Ages, the common people lived a very harsh and physically demanding lifestyle. They were serfs at the very bottom of the feudal system, and had to swear an oath on the Bible to serve and obey their local lord. Many peasants worked as farmers for the lords who owned the fields, and because of the nature of farming, certain tasks had to be done at a specific time of the year. Not only did they have to work their own land, but they were also obliged to work on church land for free as well. This was a highly inconvenient use of their valuable time, which could be better spent providing food and money for their own families. The control wielded by the church was such that people were afraid to commit any sin that might offend God and stop them from entering heaven. In addition, the peasants had to pay one-tenth of whatever they earned to the church, either in money or in goods. The latter was usually the case because money was scarce. The peasant farmers usually paid in seeds, and this caused great hardship, leaving the family short for sowing the fields in the following year. The church tithes were kept in large tithe barns. Sadly, a lot of the grain that was stored would either be eaten by rats or ruined by their urine and droppings. In 1395, the French historian and poet Jean Frossard described the nobility as having great power over the serfs, so that they were, quote, "...bound by law to plough the fields of their masters, harvest the corn, gather it into barns, and thresh the grain. They must mow and carry home the hay, cut and collect wood, and perform all manner of tasks of this kind." As a general rule, the forests were owned by the local nobles or even the king, so anyone caught poaching game would be severely punished. It wasn't just farmers that reared animals, most medieval families kept chickens, sheep and cows to provide eggs, wool and dairy products. Eggs were so prized that chickens would hardly ever be killed for their meat. Domesticated animals such as cattle and sheep were unable to feed themselves over the winter so they would be reared and slaughtered at the onset of the colder months. Joints of meat would either be salted or smoked to preserve them and feed the family until the spring. Most homes would have a hook over the fireplace where meat could be smoked. In the early Middle Ages, most peasants lived in wooden framed crook houses with little furniture and straw lining the floor. Sleeping and cooking was carried out in the same room. Any animals had to be brought into the home at night, Bears and wolves were still roaming around the English countryside at that time, and could easily steal chickens, pigs or a cow, which would be disastrous for the family. Left alone outside, an animal could wander off or be stolen by other people. They were protected inside the home, but this would create unsanitary conditions as the animals would not have been house trained, and would also carry fleas and mites. Beds were simple mattresses stuffed with straw and would have attracted all types of vermin and bugs. The peasants themselves would have been infested with lice. Houses would have no running water or toilets. Any human waste would be collected in a bucket and either thrown out into the street or taken down to the nearest body of water. Unfortunately, this same river or pond would also provide water for washing and cooking. The most commonly eaten meat was beef, as it was considered too vulgar for the nobility. Many poorer households kept a cow, which would be slaughtered once it was too old for milking. Those parts which weren't eaten would be used for other essential items. The hide could be made into leather, and the bones could be made into implements such as needles for sewing, fasteners, or even weapons. Pigs were another favoured animal for peasant families, as they needed a lot less care. They could be found just about everywhere in medieval Europe. They were also able to forage for themselves, even on the city streets, and they could also fend off any predators that came near, such as foxes. When slaughtered, all parts of the pig would be used for food. 
Along with fat and cereals, the blood made black puddings, the intestines would be used for sausage casing, even the trotters could be used to make jelly. Bacon and ham lasted a long time once it had been cured or pickled, so it became the staple meat for peasants during the winter months. In the towns and cities, not many had their own kitchen, so they needed to buy ready-made food from street merchants, albeit different to the ready-made meals of today. Beef was used as filling for pies and other food items, as was pork. Sheep might also be kept by peasant families, they could use the used milk, regularly trade or sell any wool, and eat the mutton once the sheep became too old to be useful. After the Norman Conquest in 1066, any game animal belonged to the nobles. Poachers could be executed, so catching deer and wild boar were only an option for the bravest peasants. The hunting of rabbit and hare was allowed though, and they would be caught in snares left throughout the countryside. The nobility domesticated rabbits in the early Middle Ages. They were bred for meat and kept in large pens called warrens. In the mid-13th century, Henry III of England served 500 hares and 200 rabbits at a Christmas feast. As a rule, meat was a luxury for the poorer people of the early Middle Ages and was rarely eaten. Their staple foods were bread and cereals. During the 9th century, almost three quarters of people's diets was based on barley, oats and rye. It's also worth mentioning that after the devastation of the Black Death in 1353, the population of Europe was ravaged. Around 200 million people died. This brought about a much smaller populace, making food more available. At this time, even the poor were able to afford to eat meat. Recipe books from the Middle Ages suggest that, unlike the poorer people, the nobility was eating a whole array of strange dishes, such as roasted cats, swans, and peacocks. Hedgehogs were served in pastry or cameline sauce. This sauce, made with bread, wine, and spices, was so popular that it could be bought ready-made from merchants in Paris during the 14th century. Swans were especially prized as a banquet dish, and their entrails were often minced before being mixed with bread, vinegar, ginger, and blood. Another recipe suggests that the bird should be roasted, and then redressed in its skin and feathers before service. Yum. Fish could be caught in streams and rivers if the lord of the manor would allow it. The nobility preferred meat to fish, so this was often the case. Of course, those peasants who lived by the sea were lucky enough to be able to fish without having to get permission. Inland rivers and lakes were packed with fish in the Middle Ages. Salted fish and pickled herrings were the most common fish eaten in medieval Europe, as well as mackerel, herring, eels, and lampreys. This hideous parasitic fish was considered a delicacy, and would be eaten on days when meat was not allowed. King Henry I of England, who ruled during the 10th century, was said to have died because of an overindulgence of lampreys. Anything not eaten during the summer would be preserved ready for the winter. Cod would also be dried and salted. This was called stockfish, and is still made in northern Norway and Iceland to this day. So much salted fish was consumed in the medieval diet that sauces were made to make them more appetizing. Most had a wine or vinegar base rather than cream or milk, and contained lots of herbs and spices. Christianity had a huge influence over what people could eat and when they could eat it. During the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church unified Europe politically and dominated medieval life. They even influenced people's eating habits. Everybody believed in God, heaven, and hell, whether they were a king or the lowliest village peasant. Following the rules of the church was a person's only way to ensure themselves a place in heaven. Catholic law sanctioned official days of fast to cleanse and discipline the faithful. By the 10th century, this happened three days a week, on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. 
Eating was banned on these three days before 3pm. In the later Middle Ages, this time was moved until after evening prayers. The period of Lent is an important and solemn time in the church calendar. It leads up to Easter and the sorrow of the crucifixion. It lasts for 40 days and nights from Ash Wednesday until the day before Easter Sunday, known as Holy Saturday. Many people still give up things for Lent, even today, such as alcohol or chocolate. During the late medieval period, Lent lasted for 46 days because it included six Sundays as well. Lent was a particularly hard time for the medieval peasant who had a physical job such as farming because the fast was prolonged for so long. No meat was permitted during the period and milk, dairy products and eggs were also banned. This usually meant a boring diet of salted fish for over a month. Instead of two or three meals a day, fast day had just one and usually consisted of a normal portion of bread and vegetables, or sometimes just bread. On Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, no food was allowed at all. The only people exempt from fasting were children, the elderly, beggars and pilgrims. Regardless of wealth or status, bread was the basis of the medieval diet and was a staple food for everyone. Brown bread was eaten by poorer people. In fact, the browner the bread was, then the poorer you were likely to be. It was more time consuming and therefore more expensive to produce white flour. Wheat was used to make the finest bread. Rye made a much darker bread and oats or barley were grown in colder, wetter areas such as England. Crops would often fail and there would be poor harvest, so grain would be supplemented with other ingredients. Peas and beans or even acorns would be added to make horse bread when grain was scarce. It was edible, but not eatable. Although in larger settlements there was more choice for the poorer people with white bread being available as well as wheat rolls and even wastel, which was high quality, made with very fine flour and more like a cake than a bread. In about 1400 you would probably be able to buy about 3 or 4 loaves for a penny. Unleavened dough produced an indigestible and heavy bread, so this was made quite thinly and was used as a plate. These plates were known as trenchers. Once soaked in gravy or sauce, the bread plate would be eaten as well. During feasts in noble households, these trenchers were made from three-day-old brown bread cut in half. The slices were hollowed out in the centre so that they could hold freshly killed meat and vegetables. There is conflicting historical evidence that these trenches were either eaten with the meal or given to the poor after diners had finished with them. One ingredient often used in the making of bread and as a cooking ingredient was ale. Most people drank either ale, cider or mead as an accompaniment with food. Contrary to popular belief, they also drank water if they had a good clean source, such as a river or stream. Rainwater and snow would be collected in barrels. Underground streams would be found and accessed by digging a well, and mountain streams would also be used not only for drinking and washing, but also for irrigating gardens and filling water trowels for animals. In towns and cities where access to fresh water was less likely, small ale might be drunk, especially by children and servants, because it contained a lower amount of alcohol than other ales. Sometimes it would be scented with raspberries if they could be found. Ale was made from barley or other grains with herbs mixed in for flavour. There were other variants too. Hot milk was added to make posset ale, and a more expensive brew of mead known as bragat was made using honey and spices. Cider was made by steeping apples in water and leaving them to ferment. Mead was particularly popular in medieval Ireland after the introduction of beekeeping in the 5th century. Sometimes it would be infused with hazelnuts to further enhance the flavour. Ale was drunk for a variety of reasons. Making a living at the time was labour intensive. Not only was the beer needed to replace lost fluids from sweating, but also to provide the necessary calories needed for such energetic work. 
It was cheap to make at home, and most importantly it helped to boost morale at a time when life was hard and short. How little has changed. Ale would have been drunk from about the age of five, and during the 13th century, most adults would drink approximately one gallon of ale per day. Food cultivation was very important for the medieval peasants. Vegetables and herbs were an essential part of their diet. In fact, the word vegetable was rarely used during the Middle Ages. Herbs, roots, and green plants were all referred to collectively as herbs. Herbs as we now know them were used extensively during the Middle Ages. They were easy and inexpensive to grow and made a lot of the bland food eaten by a poor family much more palatable and interesting, as expensive spices could only be afforded by the rich. Although the nobles would happily eat onions, leeks, and garlic, they considered any other vegetables only fit to feed the poor, and not very nutritious. This was because dried vegetables were exclusively eaten by monks when they were fasting under vows of abstinence. Barley bread was also fed to monks for a set period of time as a punishment for disciplinary offences. Root vegetables such as carrots and parsnips were eaten, as well as several types of bean. Cabbages were popular and there were many varieties including the Easter cabbage and the apple headed. Lentils were avoided if at all possible as they were thought to cause an inflammation of the inside, affect the sight, and bring on nightmares. The cucumber was also said to be disagreeable, because it was thought that the French, who regularly ate it, were consistently subjected to fevers. Fruit and vegetables were never eaten raw, as this was thought to cause diseases. One cookbook dated 1500 tells the chef to, quote, Beware of green salads and raw fruits, because they will make your master sick. So. Vegetables were usually served in a stew or soup, and fruit was either cooked and preserved in honey, or baked into pies. Apples, pears, and quinces grew wild. The quince was a very useful fruit that could be simmered and made into a type of marmalade or used as a seasoning for meat. Wild cherries, strawberries, raspberries, and red currants could be found in the woods. As well as foraging for berries, other foodstuffs could also be found in the woods, such as nuts, mushrooms, and wild honey. In the mountainous regions of Italy and France, peasants foraged for chestnuts, which became an important part of their diet. Both the rich and poor ate a dish called pottage. It was the simplest and cheapest form of cookery, and was an early type of soup. The average peasant would own an earthenware pot that they could place in the hot ashes of their fire, or a cast iron cauldron that they could hang over it. Vegetables such as celery, cabbage, leeks or peas would be chopped and thrown into the pot. Fresh herbs like rosemary, parsley, sage or thyme would be added for flavour as well as any meat that was available. These ingredients would be simmered in a stock of water or ale and left to cook. A more costly and thicker pottage would be eaten by the nobility, known as a mortru. Peasant pottage was usually quite thin, had less nutritional value, and was also less filling. Milk drunk during this time would come from either cows, sheep, or goats. Unlike today, fresh milk was not generally available because there was no way to stop the milk from becoming sour. So, most poor people would drink fermented buttermilk that was left over from the butter churning process, or whey from cheese making. Workers would often eat a hard milk cheese with bread. So, to conclude, it's commonly accepted that medieval peasants lived on a diet of roast meats and slop made from a thin gruel. It seems that this is just not true. Many were in fact able to access a range of healthy foodstuffs by fishing, farming, and foraging. Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Please do like and comment if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you'd like to keep up with our weekly videos.